Coming up this week on the Chill Lifestyle Show 772, Jason Coombs is back. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Xbox, and J- Jason, a big fan of the Xbox, so we're going to be talking about the new Xbox uh, S and the X, the Game Passes, what all that means. Richard's here as well. We'll be talking about the latest Windows Insider news, new builds of Windows 10, leaks of XP source code, and lots more. So let's get straight to Richard and to Jason. Right, Richard, good evening. Good evening, Ian. How are you? Okay, good, thanks. We've known Gary tonight. Uh, but we are hoping to have a guest joining us shortly, a voice that may be familiar to listeners, uh, to long-term listeners. So hopefully we'll be having a guest joining us soon. Fingers crossed. Um, maybe they're having problems getting on our call with Microsoft Teams because I think it's been having a few issues today. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Azure has not had a good 24 hours. That's that. That's that's for sure. I think um, almost to kind of a. Uh, as perhaps a slight to uh, to Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella uh, proclaiming how wonderful and scalable and elastic as year was, it pretty much all fell over last night, didn't it? Yeah, the, the, it's funny that they talk about scalability and everything else, and then of course they get bitten pretty much the week after. The uh, there is a good site that I use. I think it's Download Detector, which you can down, see. Down, like, yeah, Down Detector is, is quite it, good. Yeah. It's also got, got a Twitter account as well, which you can follow. Uh, actually, you can. And what's quite interesting, like you can see all the services that. Are, use the other services at the back end because they've all got the same peak at the same time exactly yeah i mean obviously you can see you know, you know, you know, lots and lots of sites uh depend on on azure as well and as for what's caused it i mean i, I guess we'll get a post-mortem as microsoft i mean they are very open about these things so we should see a post-mortem in a few days um but it, it's got to be a bit worrying isn't it if you've if you do kind of you know uh, uh buy into the microsoft story and then it does seem it i don't know it seems to go down a lot it it, it I was I was going going and if you're looking looking to see well, you know we we lost the UK regions quite recently as well, um, and it's 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 not it's not good. It, it shouldn't be this unstable. And certainly, I mean it's almost as though there's a single point of failure somewhere in the system. I mean I we we were talking before before the show that that maybe it's to do with the Azure Active Directory and all the services that must hang hang off that. But um, I imagine there's some some uh, some serious thinking going on at the moment inside Microsoft. Yeah, yeah that's it. And uh... Having recently rolled out 365, um, people will st- very quickly to tell you when there's been an issue. But to be fair, we haven't seen any issues in the UK today. Maybe one signing problem that sort of went away by itself, which may be an inside effect on that. But uh, yes, I mean, I mean, I mean, we saw um, early this morning. We saw um, uh, OneDrive and SharePoint. People who were unlucky enough to be signing into the affected infrastructure got hit by that. But only new signings. If 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 you already signed in, you were fine. Uh, so there are, but again, it was a relatively small subset of users. However, again, you look into it and you see, ah, oh, that's you know, and I think Teams is now having a slight issue as well. But some users are affected, some are affected. I think there's a problem somewhere lurking in Microsoft's cloud. And if 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 you're unlucky enough to be assigned to that particular regional servers, then um, then you seem to be having an, an issue. So, yeah, hopefully they'll they'll, they'll fix it. I mean, I think with all these things in the cloud, it, it's worth, you know, people say, oh, it's the cloud, it's it's not stable, it's unreliable. It's always worth bearing in mind that, you know, on-prem stuff is can equally be, can be as equally flaky oh, as well, yeah. uh, if not more so. So um, uh, it's just when, you know, the, the, the cloud market is so fiercely competitive with uh, Amazon's offering and Microsoft's and things, you think it, it Microsoft probably need to get this a bit more stable. Certainly, if they're going to keep on <laughs> banging on about, about how how great it is. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I can. I, I've, I've been managed Exchange servers and other servers for for a long time. I can tell you that uh, yeah, they do get those outages. And at least when it's a, an Office three six five outage, you don't have to rush around and try and fix it. You, know, you can let someone at Microsoft do that. Well, did you see the um, uh, the next version of Exchange server servers going to uh, a subscription model? Is it? Yes, it is still on prem, but you know yeah. you now be be paying a, a subscription with in place upgrades and things. So it's uh, uh, that and I think SharePoint and uh, Skype for Business. I think it's all under the same kind of umbrella. So um, that I think is is interesting if you're an on prem manager. But we're getting very very uh, enterprise here, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've I've got rid of my on prem. I'm quite glad about that. To be honest. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. When when something goes down, at least the, the worst case is you say, well, it's at Microsoft, and um, you know what else? What can you do? As a, as opposed to somebody asking when you're going to try and restore that uh, Exchange database that's corrupt. <laughs> so you you're just passing the buck with me, is that is what you're saying? You've yeah, never... quite quite happy to do that. Yeah. The blame for his be bounces off your desk and onwards to uh, to, to Redmond. Yeah. 
Okay, so what I wanted, lots of things we want to talk about tonight. Let's start with the um, builds that we got last week, and we got a new feature. We did well, new, newish, I guess, <laughs> newish. This is a this will be build two hundred two two one, which is the one that came out in the dev channel, formerly known and loved as the fast ring. Uh, yeah, this came out. I think was it around this time last week, or it was last Wednesday, I think. Yeah, Wednesday. So this was um uh, something we've seen on the Skype web client before, which is you can basically do meet now. And what happens is, in if you're if you're one of the, I don't think everyone's getting it, are they? <laughs> so this is my old favourite, A B testing. Okay, so and not everyone's getting this, yeah. So I'll no, just no, quickly no. run through the feature, and then and then you can tell me what you think about A B testing in, because that'll be a fun <laughs> rant from, from from you. But yeah, so this feature is a, it's basically one click, and you can kick kick off a, a, a Skype um, video uh, meeting um, or join join on without needing to have an account. Yeah, you, know, you just basically it's, it's 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 kind of making a very seamless way of creating sky you know of creating sky meetings. And I think uh, maybe an acknowledgement from Microsoft that they they dropped the ball massively with Skype at the start of the pandemic because you would have thought with Skype they would have been in a perfect position to have cleaned up, but it appears not. And, and Zoom came from behind and and has now overtaken everyone. So uh, this might be a, an attempt to regain some ground by by shoehorning this feature into Windows 10, but it does feel a little bit late if I'm honest. Um, but it's still it, it, it's a it's an it's a nice toy, but it is only rolling out to a subset of insiders. Why is that, Ian? Yeah, because Microsoft are doing the usual thing with A/B testing, and I, I I can understand why they do it because they want to you know they don't want to throw something and get a ton of feedback back. But I I say that, but then I don't understand because surely that's the whole point of the insider feedback is that they get as much uh, as as much testing information as they can. Uh, and by having a very limited a feature like that, having it with a limited rollout means they're going to get a very small amount of feedback. And I suppose they'll argue that if they get positive feedback, then they can release it to a largest group of people. Maybe that's the case. But I just think they need all the feedback they can get and just put this out and, and give it to give it to everyone. Uh, I yeah. mean, it's re it's really weird because I had my Surface Go and a VM, and uh, the VM got the feature and the Surface Go didn't. So it's not even depend on user or anything else like that it's it's just some random number it seems and i know they mentioned about getting rid of it but they've got it even worse on it it seems yeah well exactly i mean i mean they did promise you know with with a great change of lead, of leadership in um uh, in, in the windows insider program that they did say this was going to go away and i think it's not just uh, the randomness of which machine gets it, because I've got two machines here, uh, which, which one's got it, and one hasn't got it, and I couldn't tell you why. I think it's also a, um, you know, it, they, they they risk alienating the good, you know, the insiders and the goodwill, because if you, if you sign sign up to to be on the dev channel, you expect to get the latest greatest code. That's what you're there for, and you're not getting it. And I think that's you know. That annoys people. I mean, you sound annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> which is which is unusual. Uh, <laughs> you're always such a such a positive fellow about these things, but it is annoying, and um, and, and I think they do run the, the the risk of just you know annoying their Windows insiders to the point where people think, what, what's the point of being a Dev Channel insider if I'm not going to get the, the the new code to yeah. play with? So yeah, it's it's you know they, they, I can understand technically why they're doing A/B testing, but equally. I think we need to be perhaps more open or more or more transparent with with how you do it. I'm not quite sure how they can because obviously everyone's going to want to have the new stuff. Uh, so hmm, interesting one. Yeah, um, it's and the feature itself is fairly minor. I mean, it's literally a button to create a meeting or join a meeting, and like you described. Uh, and yeah. I, I can't help thinking it's a, a, they've left it a little bit late to do that, but you know it's good it's there. I, I wonder whether really they should be focused on getting Teams out to to everybody now and making like a home version of Teams. Um, yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's it's the uh, way forward. I mean, I think that the challenge they've got with Teams is is you know they, they must be looking at again the likes of Zoom and thinking how do we get Teams to be that frictionless for a home user? I just don't know how you do it. I just don't know how you would make Teams as frictionless. Oh, sorry, Teams as frictionless as, as Zoom is for mm. you know consumers who perhaps aren't au okay fait with using this stuff and setting up Teams groups and things. Uh, yeah, it, I, again, I imagine there's some serious thought happening inside um, in, inside Microsoft Towers about that. But then again, maybe they don't care because consumers, Microsoft doesn't care about, about consumers yeah. anymore. Who knows? And I'm trying to think if there, there was a, a number of fixes. I think they fixed the one of the WSL install 
uh, issues as well with that build. Yes, they, yes, they, 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 they fixed some bits and pieces there. There was also um, uh, some new your phone mods too. I think you could uh, pin uh, pin notifications in your phone as well now. Yes, and that's that, right. Yeah, that crept out too. But yes, there, there were quite a few uh, fixes in there as well uh, around around uh, uh, particularly the the, uh, the really nasty one where uh, the Linux kernel uh, wouldn't be installed if you were using the uh, the install um, yeah. <laughs> parameter, which was an unfortunate one. Um, but of course, you know you have to. I mean, you have to bear in mind this is preview code, so things are going to go wrong, and there's no guarantee that anything you see in in the dev channel is going to ever actually even see the light of day. But I'd be surprised if that um if that Skype thing didn't turn up quite quickly elsewhere. Yeah, and it wouldn't surprise me if they if that ends up in relatively quickly, maybe even you know not necessarily tied to a to a major release. It just turns up in a because it's it's just a button, isn't it? So I don't think they need to wait till twenty whatever it is twenty one H one for that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it's it could could well just come down as as an optional update. Yeah, so we'll, we'll be interested to see that. I think we also had, um, oh, just as we were recording last week, we we had we did have the 20H1 update, but we talked about that last week. That's right, yeah. <laughs> A 20H2. The final, say. final, 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 final. Build. Now, there's been no one, more final builds since then. Yeah, I think we've not had one today. So um, we won't get the build, we won't get the release next week, I don't think it'll be the week after. And that's when that that will hit. Yeah, it would seem it would seem like like a patch Tuesday would be the one to uh to go for. Now, just the perfect time to talk about Patch Tuesday. Um, it's our old friend that's joining us, Jason. Jason Coombs. Good evening, at last. Oh, I, thought, I thought Skype was a nightmare when we used to use that. <laughs> Battling through teams. <laughs> Oh, can so my surface? I think it's installed the H twenty H two update because it's still on the release preview. That uh, wouldn't connect to my internet, so I've been trying to get that resolved, restarting it and shutting down, and and then Teams wouldn't start, and then I signed in using my normal Outlook account, and that um, and said I wasn't signed up for Teams yet, so I just try signing in using my business account, and finally, oh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and Ian, you've been transported to a new location. Um, yeah, same location <laughs> with a lick of paint, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> it looked very, very different from the last time I was here. I, t- I probably tied it up since you were the last time. <laughs> <laughs> How have you both been? Oh, all oh, oh good. Yeah, just uh, uh, managed to resist the urge to order an Xbox uh, Series X. Which is why, Jason, we wanted you on the show, because we were talking Xbox and things last couple of weeks and i felt out of my depth with, without <laughs> without you here to to talk about that and uh the the and that and the playstation and the x cloud and all the subscription services yes yeah it's been a, it's been an interesting few months since the last time we spoke um including some fun with irs <laughs> yeah so um <laughs> yeah we've had about i don't know you must have had a few ios releases since you were last on the <laughs> yes yeah no i was more thinking along the lines of the uh the project x cloud oh uh, those are from the ios yeah from but yes <laughs> yeah so have you, have you got x cloud on your uh, ipad no uh, <laughs> <laughs> on no. that yeah um, yeah yeah so what i thought we'd do is it'd be great to catch up with you and Aside from you, every time we, we talk about uh, an Apple story, we always say, oh, Jason would love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did want to talk about the Xbox. And first of all, I want to find out, have you ordered uh, a new Xbox? And the answer is no, I have not. <laughs> and, I'm quite, uh, and I'm quite proud of myself for, for, for saying that. Um, I did I did come close. Um, we, did, we did talk about um, selling my, because I've got a Project Scorpio Xbox One X. Um, and I did think about selling that um, to go towards a new Xbox Series X, but um, the reality is that um, one, I don't really uh, game enough to, to warrant it, but also um, I had to kind of be honest and say, well, actually, I'm really happy with the, with the Xbox One X. It does um, kind of the equivalent of 4K gaming. I, I've never been one for picking up on frame rates and, and graphic quality um, beyond kind of watching 4K Blu-rays and stuff. Um, so ultimately, the the main things which which we'll come on to the Series X just 
doesn't necessarily you know, it's nothing that I would really notice. I think the load times would have been a really nice, nice thing. But apart from that, um, as I say, you know, I've got the 4K uh, Blu-ray player in the Xbox One X. Um, it does 4K gaming, right? It might not be able to quite achieve the same locked-in frame rates as, as the new hardware, but it still is 4K gaming. Some of the games that I play probably aren't even true 4K anyway. Um, so there just there just wasn't really any justification from it. I think. Um, something that may consider in the future is possibly the, the subscription service which again we'll probably come on to but but no so yeah ultimately the answer is no uh, I, I, yeah with having a one x i'm i'm not surprised it, it kind of although i do believe uh, i was talking to someone the, the tradings are quite good for the one x yeah they're not too bad i think i looked um and it was i think it was going on around about the 200 pound mark um Unfortunately, what I couldn't find, which is what I was hoping to get, was was a kind of a good deal on uh, Project Scorpio edition. Um, mm. Unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily ha- that doesn't seem to have whether or not it would if you sold it on one of the, the auction sites or something. It might have some um, additional sale resale value, but in terms of trading, it's, it's they just consider it a standard Xbox One X one terabyte. That's all they're interested in. Yeah, and um, I, I know Richard didn't get one, but you ho- hovered, didn't you, Richard? But decided not to. Yeah, I was sorely tempted, actually. Um, uh, although I have to say, what what did appeal to me was uh, it, it looked like you could go for the Xbox uh, Ultimate Game Pass for about twenty nine pounds a month, and then if you committed for two years, you'd get an Xbox Series X. Did I understand that right? Yeah, they um they're doing the um what I think it's called Xbox Access, which they started doing with the Xbox One X, and I think even the Xbox One S. Um, which is essentially a, uh, a subscription service where you don't buy the hardware outright. So you're essentially renting. Um, sorry, actually, that's not quite true. So you do ultimately end up owning the Xbox um, unless you decide that at the end of the two year period that you want the next Xbox. And I think that's obviously Microsoft's hope. Um, and so that was something I might consider in the future, um, because if you want to keep it, you can keep it. But if you want to trade it in, um, then you can hand it over and get, get the, whatever is the latest at the time. Um, I think yes, it's for the Series X and originally for the Xbox One X. It's about twenty-five pounds a month, and that gives you the Xbox console, gives you your Xbox um, Live um, through kind of Xbox Games Pass Ultimate. Um, so I guess probably if you worked it out over the three over the two or, or three years, that you probably end up paying more than if you just purchased the hardware outright. But the, the, the real benefit is the fact that. Um, I believe it's kind of like a zero percent interest rate loan essentially um that you haven't got to try and find that money out right uh, up front and it includes those extras and especially with the recent announcement that the ea access um, which is now ea play um which would have cost you about roughly about 20 25 pounds for an annual pass and um, that is also now getting rolled into xbox game pass ultimate or xbox game pass for pc so, as I say, I think probably if, if you did the maths, it would probably work out slightly more expensive. I don't think you, I don't think you'd be miles off, um, but it's certainly, yeah, um, it's certainly an easy way to, to jump straight in and start playing. Um, and even with with the Xbox Game Pass, you've got to worry about buying games at sixty, seventy pounds a pop because you you've got such a massive library now. Um, I think I've just seen that Forza Motorsport Seven is coming in a couple of months' time. Um, and there's obviously a, a huge number of games and, and the EA Play, which includes EA games, not necessarily current games, but certainly, um, you know, old, older games like previous, probably the previous iteration of FIFA or um, the um, Titanfall games, um, all the back catalogue um, is in there. So it's, it's certainly, again, an, another massive um, games library. Yeah, and, and, and I was reading that... Um... Uh, well, well, I've seen some re- reviews in the, in the last week that uh, the backwards compatibility also can can improve a bunch of those old Xbox One games when 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 played in the Series X. Yeah, and even the Xbox 360 games. So, um, so as I kind of briefly mentioned, so one of the biggest changes in the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S is is what they call the Velocity architecture, which is this new custom SSD drive. And that essentially allows games to load incredibly quickly. I saw on Engadget they were talking about 10 seconds or so. Um, and obviously, if you played a game like Forza Motorsport, that can take an absolute age to load on old hardware. Yeah, um, that's one of the things that always kind of puts me off because I just can't be bothered waiting around. <laughs> yes, yeah. So that is that is definitely one of the, one of the big things. The, the downside is to take advantage of that. You you can only run those games from the internal storage, which is is one terabyte on the X and half a terabyte on the on the S and 
obviously with modern 4K games, that can fill up pretty quickly. Um, I know I haven't seen UK pricing, but you can also buy a one terabyte expansion card, which has the same runs at the same speed. Um, but you're looking at about almost, I think it was somewhere between 200 and 250 dollars for that, which obviously that's you know that's half the price, well, like more than half the yeah. price of the console. Um, you can still play games from an external USB 3 drive, but they won't. Um, so Xbox Series X games have to be played from the from the new architecture new ssd drive but older games can they just won't benefit from the load times um but yeah certainly in terms of um, graphical performance you will see an increase um, even if you're going from an xbox one s to an xbox uh, series s you will see a jump in in graphical performance um and as i say yeah so they are looking at upscaling some xbox series x games to 4k um so really yeah, really the I think if you've got an Xbox One S, then jump into a Series X would definitely you'd definitely notice a massive change because the Xbox One S doesn't support 4K gaming, so that would be a huge leap. Um, and so you've got the velocity architecture with the load times, um, and then you've got um, on the X, 4K gaming is pretty much guaranteed to be 60 frames per second, whereas the Xbox One X, um, these names are so terribly similar. Um, the, uh, the while the 4K can, can achieve 30 to 60 frames per second, most games kind of struggle to maintain that when there's when you've got a lot of action on screen, you probably find those frame rates slipping back down to nearer 30. Um, whereas the Xbox Series X is supposed to be pretty much locked in at 60 frames per second and up to 120 frames per second. I think this, um, the, the, the naming conventions have been interesting. They? They, do, and they love the X and the S at the moment at Microsoft, but it doesn't really differentiate it that much from the One X. No, no. And I think they're even, I, I didn't actually read the story, so, so this might not be completely accurate, but um, apparently Amazon had reported an uptick in Xbox One X sales. <laughs> Whether or not that was actually people ordering them, thinking they were ordering a Series X, which they probably got quite a shock the next day when, <laughs> yeah, when the Xbox yeah. turned up and, um, maybe some of them even got as far as unpacking them. I don't know, but um, but yeah, the, I think this Xbox One X, Xbox Series X. I guess I, I can kind of see it, but they could have called it the X2 or something. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, yeah. It's, it, it does it does seem to be almost like random naming. It, it reminds me of of, of the, the various random names that Windows Windows has, has had over the year from Windows 2000, XP, <laughs> Vista, eight, seven, ten. It's uh... a. <laughs> Uh, they're just doing it with like the surface hub aren't they you've got the x and the and the s and of course the x is not arriving at current i don't think but uh and then you've got windows 10x and you know is the it's the well, end thing with, isn't it? yeah with the surface yeah. hub too that is interesting. i haven't i have noticed in in a few bits and pieces of microsoft blurb about the surface hub 2 they have started dropping the s i don't know if that's just an accident or a typo but whereas before it would be the surface hub 2s 2x is coming soon don't seem any. Don't, I'm not seeing any mention of the X for a while now. It's just Surface Hub two, and occasionally they might see an S on it as well. So, yeah, it's all a bit inconsistent and weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think what's interesting, really, the biggest difference between Sony and, and Xbox or Microsoft is, um, so Xbox have gone with their current lineup, albeit upgraded. So you've got the Series S, which um, doesn't have an optical drive um, and isn't 4K gaming, and then you've got the Xbox One X that has the 4K drive and is 4k and potentially 8k gaming whereas what sony done with the playstation 5 is essentially it's the same hardware just you either choose whether or not you want a blu-ray player or not um, and that's the price differentiator so i think that's kind of interesting really maybe it's a shame that microsoft hasn't followed suit with that because um while the xbox series s is is cheap and does offer up to 1440 um in terms of graphics, I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> that's <laughs> obviously slightly higher than HD, but unless you're playing on a monitor that's got that resolution, um, I'm not really sure of the benefit of on a on a big TV. But um, I mean, certainly, I think there is some potential upscaling that it does. Um, but the, the, as with the current lineup, there is there is really a big difference between the, the S series and the X. Um, I think really anyone that that kind of wants that full 4K experience is is going to end up buying the Xbox One X, whereas I think maybe blu-ray play uh, blu-ray less xbox one x uh, sorry xbox series x might have been a better more attractive option for some people um but obviously you know the series s is, is far more far cheaper than the the than i suspect mm. the, the series x would be even without that blu-ray player no oh, um my son jack has ordered one um an s 
Um, and he said he's because he he's not going to use a 4K because he uses it on a monitor on his desk. Um, and he, he mainly plays PC games, but he wanted to have an Xbox, so uh, he's gone for the S. Um, and I think he's going for the Game Pass Ultimate as well, so to, so he gets those games on the PC and on the Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Interesting enough, as um, as you mentioned, you know, if it, hovering over purchase one was probably too much because they they went pretty quickly. Yeah, and they don't talk about numbers, but uh, I don't know. Would you say we say overall that this seems to be a lot more successful launch for gamers than the Xbox One was when that originally launched? Yeah, I mean, I know, I know the the Scorpio edition for the Xbox One X that went pretty quickly due to the limited numbers. And as you say, you know, we don't know how many Series X um, devices there were. Um, obviously, with the current conditions, I know Sony, although they denied it. Um, are potentially hit by you know the volume that they're actually able to get to retail for launch day. I know um, that the Xbox account kind of said that there will be launch day stock available of the Xbox Series X, so it's possible that that's that they're also holding back for that, um, so that people can actually potentially walk into a store. Though I would expect that that probably drives up pretty quickly. And let's face it, is anyone going to be walking into any stores uh, <laughs> well, yeah. for the next few months? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I doubt it. Certainly, yeah, certainly we're still avoiding going out as, as little as possible. Yeah, yeah, I was interested. I was at, um, I had to nip somewhere on the weekend and there was a retail park and there's a Smith's, which is the toy shop that does uh, games. And that was the only sh- shop in that area that had a queue. Uh, <laughs> so there was quite a large queue for that one. So I wonder whether that was people going looking for consoles or it's just that toy shops in general have a, have a big queue but that was the interesting that was the only one no queue outside pc world or any of the other stores i think smith was was one of the ones that also had their their their, their website fall over didn't they didn't they a, a whole bunch of uh, uh of, of of stores had their online presences yeah. uh basically crushed by the by the sheer demand for the xbox series x <laughs> yeah. and, and they were one of the stores that did, did that deal that you were talking about 24 pound a month they were one of the i think it was because it was only a few stores that were selling that or doing that option and they were one of them yeah As, game and and microsoft too were doing theirs for 28 for 28 pounds a month because that i almost clicked by almost clicked by like, almost no, back away back <laughs> away you don't need one you don't need one back away i've got, I've got a quest to arriving in a couple of weeks just back away from the xbox yeah i, I didn't um, i haven't looked at i haven't even looked at one because um i do very little gaming on my um, on my Xbox as we've talked about. You know, Jason, I've mentioned, but I bought a wheel and I've got the VR headset, so I play on Project Cars and um, mm. some of the, the driving games on my laptop. So with the headset on, so I don't really use the Xbox. And the Xbox gets really useful a lot for Netflix, and uh, it works. The old uh, Xbox One, the original one, the, the Day One edition, works great for for Netflix. So um, I'll just keep using that for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't blame. I think, I think you know, the, as I say, the jump from the Xbox One X to the Xbox Series X, I think it's it's quite hard to justify. I think and if you're a hardcore game and you've you know you you really want that frame rate, then you know I can see justifying it. But and. I so say the low times is is quite appealing. I think if anything, that would have mm-hmm. been the thing that might might have made me jump. But so I don't, I don't, I don't game often enough for it to to be a problem really. Um, and obviously the other issue is you know if you do want to expand the stories, that's that's quite an expensive leap, especially with a lot of games. I mean, admittedly, we're we're fortunate with the fibre broadband that we don't need to necessarily keep games local all the time. Um, and they've now launched the the kind of the uh, streaming from the consoles which interesting enough is available on ios so you, there is a, the oh, sorry i think the app's coming it's been it's been updated for android but not for ios yet but that will allow you to stream games locally from um from your xbox um and then again you know you obviously to play on a smaller screen so you know you don't necessarily need that 4k rates um so it's just saying that project x cloud doesn't work on ios either <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was going to try that um, that streaming because I used the old streaming features that I mean, that was in the original Xbox mm. One from day one, and it, I had some success with it, um, but I found it was a bit uh, you know every now and then it would it would crash and jitter in, especially if you were trying to play a driving game, it you know, that lag was too much. So I was going to try it with my phone, but I just haven't got around to testing it yet with that new version of it. Yeah, I think um, I mean it should. In theory, it should work a whole lot better because it is it is based on the Project X Cloud technology, 
Um, and one of the things that comes with that is not just the, the amazing fact that you can stream a game in, in high res graphics and in real time, um, but the that also incorporates their kind of overlay controls. So, I mean, if you're if you're using a, a, an Xbox controller, that's obviously irrelevant. But if you're trying to play a game remotely on a handheld device without a controller, um, you need those on. You need the on-screen um, keys like the mm. X and Y and the, and the D-pad or whatever it might be and the triggers. Um, and so that's something that kind of X, the, the local uh, Xbox streaming adds, which the original Xbox streaming didn't have. You know, you, you did actually have to have a controller to play it. Yeah, and I wonder how, um, I wonder how much the impact that will have for people because you see, you know, you see people playing with Nintendo Switches and whether really that you can make that uh, that leap from TV to to small device, phone or whatever um, with 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 this system. I'm not quite sure. I think you yeah. can do. I think you can do. But I think uh, there does need to be more more thought put into game design because the last thing you want is titchy tiny text you're going to out that looks fun on the big screen, less mm. good on a, on a small screen. Yeah, and I know they were talking recently on the, on the Major Nelson podcast about what about the work they've done on things like that to make the text readable. So it will be, be interesting to see how it does work. And I think, yeah, I mean, the, the, the real the difference with the, with the Switch is when you play, you're kind of tied to that Switch. I mean, yes, there are some cross-platform games that allow you to copy progress between um, Switch and PlayStation, for example, or Switch and Xbox. But I think the difference here is that um, you are playing the full-fledged games. Um, and if you want to play it on the Xbox, you can on a big, massive screen. And then if you want to carry on on a smaller screen, you can as well. And it's, but it's the exact same game, pick up where you left off. Mm. So I think it will be interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's a shame that currently the, the, the Apple Store regulations prevent Project Xcloud from being launched on OS. The, what Apple have said is that they need um, each individual game a separate download, so a separate app for each game that you want to stream from Project Xcloud. Um, so although it would be the same streaming app, essentially, they actually want one for each individual game because their regulations are that each each game has to have its own app store entry, has to be able to have reviews and feedback, its own source for their 30% of in-app purchases. <laughs> um, and that's essentially why, why they're blocking it, because the Project X, sorry, yeah, Project X Cloud app, you download once and you've got full access to all your gaming library, whereas, uh, say, Apple say that that's not allowed because what they want is that means you can't leave reviews for individual games. But um, I think there have been some recent changes. I didn't read a lot about it, but there have been some recent changes that's trying to relax that a little bit. But again, it's still still not enough to make Project X Cloud viable. And I think the only reason why Xbox streaming from your local Xbox works is because that's your, that's yeah. your library, which I don't know. Personally, I don't really see the difference. But Yeah, what, what is either your library on, on, a, on a device in the living room or your library on a device in the cloud? Yes, yeah. So, I mean, it may well be that once Microsoft launches it, that it gets blocked. Um, I know Apple have been particularly unfriendly to uh, certain um <laughs> <laughs> certain game Fortnite and um, just recently um but yeah that's that's the apple way unfortunately <laughs> and I, I, uh, are, you, are you looking at the various subscription services now are you still sort of in the case of you just buy the individual games so i've got um because of the when they first launched well i had xbox gold subscriptions built up, up to like i think it's a couple of years and also through various offers got about a year's worth of xbox game pass um and then when they did the xbox game pass ultimate you could convert your current subscriptions and combine them so two years plus one became three years so i've kind of ended up with three years of xbox game pass ultimate anyway um so i'm kind of in in that what as i say when that comes to an end then maybe that'll be the time when i consider doing the, the xbox access subscription and actually do that that way um, mm. but yeah so uh, yeah we have access to the, to the xbox game pass which because of the way that the game show works across two consoles with a home console and a, and a second console um it's really the my eldest that gets the main benefit of that because he just if he wants a new game he just downloads it um and since my other son um has now got into pc gaming he also has access to, to the game pass for pc library as well so um, currently, it's, it's kind of stretching out a good two and a half years, so <laughs> I haven't got to worry about that yet. Yeah, and it looks like that that's increasingly a, a good proposition as, as the 
they've added some more games to this to the game studio uh, with some purchases last week you know including doom and uh wolfenstein and other and, and others yeah fallout as well yeah yeah, yeah. Let's say with, with the integration of ea um play subscription into game pass ultimate um the value is just phenomenal. I mean, if you're if you're gaming and you're gaming that much, and, and there is such a vast array of, of games available, um, yeah, it's, it just it doesn't really make sense. And plus, you also then get I think it's up to twenty percent off if you decide to buy that game. So um, some games obviously come out, so they're not they're not always in the Game Pass library. They do get dropped as new games come in, and I guess as as licensing agreements come to an end. Um, but while they're in there, you can buy them for twenty percent up to twenty percent off. Um, so there's some good value in there. And and what's I think is it PlayStation Plus the equivalent on their service? It's not the same though, is it? No. So PlayStation Plus is their equivalent of Xbox Live, um, and that includes again they do the same two free games each month. Um, but then they also have the PlayStation Now, I think it is, which is their own game library. Although that tends to lead more towards backwards um, backwards compatibility titles, so PS3 titles. Um, but it does include some sort of game library. Um, it's not something that, that I've ever used, so I, I don't know how comparable it is to Xbox. But my understanding is that the Xbox library is far, far wider. Um, and I know there's been some talk that the that, that the PS5, uh, sorry, PlayStation 5 backwards compatibility story is, is very kind of com- complex and convoluted um, in terms of what will or, or won't play. I think there's some PS4 games that will play, but not necessarily supporting PS3 games. Um, which the PS4 currently supports. So I think uh, for me, that's the, certainly the, the big, big selling point for the Xbox is the fact that the latest consoles will play all the way back to first gen Xbox titles, just like the current Xbox One X and Xbox One S will. Yeah, and I think that makes a big difference if you've got built a big library over time. But um, I don't know. We were talking about this last week, Richard, when we kind of, it's a shame really we've got to a situation where the it's very much you know one side or the other and there's this rivalry almost and, and and the fact the features don't really get taken into account it's it's which color you nail yourself to <laughs> yes yeah, yeah definitely yeah yeah i mean there, i mean there are still exclusives i think it seems to be getting less now um but yeah i think i mean certainly with cross play I mean, there are so many games now that support cross play um, but probably not so much the, the big AAA titles, but certainly things like Fortnite um, and other titles where you where you can s- switch consoles or, or play with people on different consoles or even on PC. So I think that's definitely a really positive. But where it gets from, you know, yes, well, so you've got the Spider-Man games, which are Sony licensed and only available on the PlayStation. So the exclusives do exist. And it, it even gets really stupid whereby the, the new um, Avengers game, if you want to, that it, one of the characters that will be added to the game is Spider-Man, but that will only be playable on the PlayStation. Yeah, that seems really that, stupid. Yeah, that's where it gets really, really stupid. But um, unfortunately, Sony own the rights to to Spider-Man when they were sold that years and years and years ago before Marvel Studios existed. So um, it is a shame, and it, it would wouldn't be great. But even if it was time limited, that wouldn't be quite so bad. But yeah, it's the fact that it's it's this. Uh, I'm sure a lot of it is marketing speak and, and bravado, but Xbox do say, you know, um, Phil Spencer, and they do say that they're for the gamers. They they think things like that do only serve to harm, you know, gamers. So, um, but, you know, Xbox has its excuse as well. They've just bought a massive studio and said that potentially some of those games won't be available on other platforms for much longer or in the future won't be developed for one. So <laughs> I think it's, uh, as you say, it's, it's still, unfortunately, you know, it's the same on both sides. Um, I know my, my youngest, he's got a PlayStation because that's what his friends have got. So that's that's his big driver for having a PlayStation. Mm. Whereas my oldest is his people that he does play with have got Xboxes. So that's where he wants to be. And I'm, I'm sure if those people went to PlayStation, he'd probably rethink that. Yeah, yeah, it's just a shame that they just can't all, you know, have whichever one they want and just all play together. But uh, that's not how these things work. <laughs> no, no. So it would be, uh, it would be interesting to see um, how long the Xbox Series S and sorry, the Xbox One S and Xbox One X are available for, um, whether or not they cease production of those quite quickly. Um, I think the price point, I think it's four fifty, I think, for the Xbox Series X, which is roughly about the same ballpark as the Xbox One X launched at. So 
the one positive thing, albeit I'm not denying that it's a massive chunk of money, um, but they haven't shot up in price. You know, we're not talking five, six hundred pounds for, for these consoles, which was always a possibility. Yeah, yeah, they, they, that doesn't seem to change. What we talked about last week, the, the, the game prices seem to have gone up. Yes, yeah, they've, they've certainly taken another another leap. I think you're yeah. about sixty seven pounds. But then I think game pricing has got ridiculous anyway. There's so many ultimates and deluxe editions that, you know, all got little things in them that you know, unfortunately there is you know, that as we saw with the, the research into whether or not these packs were, were considered gambling, the, the um expansion packs, not sorry, not the expansion packs, but these um, loot boxes, loot boxes yeah, and loot stuff, whether or not it was considered yeah. gambling and and so I think it is a shame that there are these different levels. I think there should just be the game. And then if you want to buy something, you know, buy an add-on pack or something, then you do so. But the actual base game, I think, should just be a single price. But, yeah, um, I think 60 70 pounds is about the base mark. But as I say, if you used to buy deluxe editions, you'd probably be paying that anyway, even up to 80 90 pounds. I think the ultimate edition of Red Dead Redemption 2, and that's a couple of years ago, that was like 90 pounds. So, oh. it, yeah, so, <laughs> but, I mean... One thing I will say with games, particularly you know, Fortnite is such an example, and I understand that obviously they've got the battle passes and things like that, so they are permanently making money out of this thing, but gaming has changed. It used to be a game launch that was around for a couple of years and then the next edition came out, and that's not the case anymore. Um, you know, a game like Destiny 2, where they're continually adding expansion packs and they add into it, and if you want, you can still play the base game, and some of that stuff gets added into the base game, and so it doesn't. And Destiny 2 is another good example that that's now been added into Xbox Game Pass, and that includes the expansion packs. Um, so, you know, it really is good value for money if that's how you want to play. And if you are looking to buy an Xbox console for the first time, I think the Xbox Access is a subscription for a couple of years. I think it is certainly something to consider. It's a long way from your Spectrum games who are 4 from Boots. Yes, yes, with no patches and no bug fixes. Uh, or for Rich's case, though, very, no, no games either, were there for the TI? <laughs> oh, that's so very, very cruel. There were plenty of games. I was just remember, I was just remember, obviously, we, we had we had Buck Rogers in the 25th century. We had Demolition Division, um, Hunt the Wumpers. I mean, come on, all classics. <laughs> Reminds really. me that's. But that intriguing. Scene, I, I was actually thinking about how much they used to cost, and they weren't cheap, you know, back in the 80s. Th- those games they cost probably 20 pounds plus. Oof. Maybe some of the, I mean, I know that the extended basic cartridge came to about sixty pounds back in the eighties, and so you kind of fast forward that to now, inflation-wise, probably similar pricing, I guess. Yeah. I think, yeah, Spectrum games about five were, ninety-five, weren't they? Between between yeah. five and ten, yeah, between five and ten, and then you know, some, then and then they got escalated the packaging size as well, wasn't it? It's interesting to see how that, and, and we and we still have kind of almost got to that. Uh, uh, now well, perhaps they, sh- they shrunk back a bit with the the D- DVD Blu-ray packaging, but uh... well, exactly yes. I mean, actually, I was uh, looking quite nostalgically. I got um, I, I write an occasional column of computers that, that have crashed in various ways, and there was um, one thing uh, somebody sent me. It was a uh, an ATM in Australia, and it had um, it, it was Windows doing setup, and there were two icons for Windows setup, and one was it with Windows with floppy disks and package software and a CRT, <laughs> and one had. Windows CRT packages, but a DVD. And I thought, oh, bless. I can't remember the last time I installed software from a DVD. Yeah, I mean, I've got like, um, I've got the original Doom, a box version of Doom. You know, with came on four floppies, but the the box is massive. Yeah. You know, for four for four floppies. And but sometimes, but yeah, I, I, I mean, you would get quite cool things in them because I've got a Seven Max Hit the Road box. Um, they're the old Lucas Arts games. That that's got all kinds of goodies in there, like comics and things. And do you remember the Infocom? It's just a bit nostalgic now. Sorry, Jason. I bet you should never come on. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the 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 indie Infocom games uh, that you, mm. you used to come with the most glorious packaging. Those those old adventure games, and you'd have like maps and things. And I can remember the Hitchhiker's Guide one came with its own pocket fluff. So <laughs> the Grand Prix, uh, the original Grand Prix game, Jeff Cramer's Grand Prix, came with a huge book. With all the tracks in, it had to have to understeer, oversteer. It was like a whole Grand Prix manual that came with it. Oh, and then cool. the copy protection was you had to enter the word on page 72, oh, I remember that. paragraph yeah. three. Do you remember that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah for us very well. Yeah, exactly. Or, or some sort of magical slider thing you have to sort of slide around to find the right code. So, yeah. I, I, the... <laughs> I'm just trying to think how much you would have paid for something like 
you know, Jeff Cameron game. It was probably twenty or typically ten, twenty quid, and that was in the nineties, wasn't it? So, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, yeah. I think when you came to kind of the Amiga, the next gen um, home computers, you did, the prices did then creep up to near the twenty pound mark, and then of course mm. the consoles then appeared, and the cartridges were initially very expensive because of course of what they were, they, they they were like press chips and things. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I. As you rightly say, um, you know, some games, they are expensive, but you do get continual updates. I'm always being um, <laughs> told off by, by, by my colleagues and friends about me moaning about modern day games like Sea of Thieves. Uh, the fact, you know, it's, it costs so much. And so I said, well, you do realise you've had an update every week for like, you know, <laughs> for quite some time now. And it's and if I think back, it's now a very di- different game for, you know, from the, from the, the, from the original. So, um, yeah, or you just go down the game pass route. Yeah, which yeah. Th- seems to make sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for mentioning Sea of Thieves. That was the other game I was trying to think of that that's just evolved so much since it since it originally launched. Yeah, it's got it's, it's got dogs in it, hasn't it? I think. Yeah, it's, 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 but, <laughs> but but it's also you know Sea of Thieves is a great example of a game that when it came out initially was really quite dull. Um, looked looked gorgeous, but it was kind of a you were doing a lot of you were doing a lot of sailing where whereas whereas the current whereas the current 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 version is just packed with with with, with content, and although you still want to play it with uh with some friends <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's that's the one thing that i think is a a downside with a lot of this now is that a lot of games are really optimized for multiplayer aren't they in the single player so it kind of gets a bit left behind which i always quite like the single player campaigns maybe it's because i'm unsociable or something, but i always quite like that yeah exactly so i guess We'll, we'll we'll have to see how um, how this progresses over time, but would it fair to say that this looks like this launch has been a better launch than than where we were with the with your Xbox One? Um, I don't know. I don't know about a better launch, but certainly, I mean, I mean, gaming hardware is, you know, if you think in terms of the jump between the 360 and the Xbox One, I think you know, gaming technology has just grown exponentially in terms of graphics performance and. Now you've got things like ray tracing, which, which I'll be honest, I really don't understand. But apparently that's supposed to be phenomenal in terms of what it adds to games. Um, but yeah, I think, I think so. That, that especially since we're not really that far beyond the, the Xbox One X launching, I think it, it is phenomenal the amount of the leap forward that graphics and performance has taken. I mean, especially with the low times, I think that I think that is going to transform yeah. games. Mm-hmm. I know um, Engadget have been given a device to play around with. They were talking about. Um, you know, when you do fast travel, um, Red Dead Redemption is a good example. You know, you can you can do fast travel across the map, but you, you're sitting there for a good. You know, you probably go and make yourself a cup of coffee while you wait for it to load. Um, and they were talking about eight eight nine seconds. It's literally almost instant. Um, so I think that's going to transform game. The other thing I didn't mention, which um, with the Xbox Series X um, and I think the Series S, um, this instant resume. So currently the Xbox One X, if you turn it off. Um, unless you're talking about an online game like Destiny 2. Um, but for example, Red Dead Redemption 2, I was playing it the other day, switched off the Xbox, came back to it, and it was literally back straight instantly where I was. Uh, but if you were to switch to a different game and then switch back, you'd have to wait for the other game to completely reload. Whereas the um, the Xbox Series X um, can support up to, I think it's five games, depending on the size of the game. Um, I think five's the average. Um, literally five games you can switch between instantly. Um, and as I say so online online presence games like Destiny 2 where you're where you're running on a server where it's a permanent online game I think they you're not going to see that but games that are offline essentially will literally just instant resume mm-hmm. yeah I think actually you know as, as much as me saying well I probably won't get the benefit one that is the probably a really key thing because that's one of my main reasons why I don't use my Xbox because by the time I've and I even get this with the gaming laptop. By the time I've loaded the game and it's loaded the track and the cars and everything, you know, it, you know, I've got to go and do something else. So if if it was that instant on, then and just you know straight into the game, pause it and come back a week later and just carry on the next lap, then it's probably I'll probably get more use out of it. Yeah, and uh, so with so with the Xbox One X, you know, again, like Project Cars, if that's all you played, that you would probably get that benefit um, unless mm. there was an operating system update, which <laughs> seems to <laughs> very, very frequently. Um, but I think, um, yeah, so you would see that. But uh, the Xbox Series X, if you had a few games that you were playing, you would, with a, a particular racing game like Forza or Project Cars, yeah, you would you would just see that resume instantly. But but yes, but yeah, just to cover that. So um, 
our Xbox downstairs is currently enrolled in the Insider program on, on the Omega Ring, which is supposed to be like a release preview. Um, and that's been seen so many updates um, and changes that have completely redesigned the guide. Um, but it does feel like there's an update at least once a week or twice a week. Um, even more if you're on the on the skip ahead rings. I think some of those um, are now testing kind of October, November um, OS updates. So the skip ahead is currently testing a November update, which I imagine is probably the one that the Series X will go live with. Yeah, um, yeah, that's come thick and fast. Well, that's where you need that bandwidth that you've got of your broadcast. <laughs> yes, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Now that we've just got a couple more things I wanted to talk about before we finish for this week. Um, Richard, I don't know you've got a story on this, but did you hear about the XP, Windows XP source code that leaked? Yeah, this is the, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, to, to, to be honest, it's been floating around for a while, uh, you know, in the in the, the darker recesses of the internet, but this is, um, uh, it, it popped up, links popped up to it, uh, to a torrent of it on the um, the infamous 4chan site. And um, mm. it basically, it's it looks like XP Service Pack 1. Um, also, I think there was a Windows 2000 on, on there as well and some other uh, older operating systems and a whole bunch of conspiracy videos, but that's obviously what you would expect from, <laughs> from that kind of location. Um, but yeah, it's it's. I think it was more embarrassing than anything, than anything else from, from, from Microsoft to see this turn up and that uh, they've not yet confirmed as far as I know that it definitely is XP. They just said they were investigating it and would take steps to keep their, their customers safe. Uh, obviously, if you're using Windows XP at this point, then quite frankly this yeah. is the least of your worries <laughs> yeah. uh, and of course this is sp1 and as we know sp2 was 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 basically in yeah, this crikey yeah. service pack 2 uh was where they basically ramped up all, all the security and, and did some serious re-engineering in the in the background for windows xp anyway uh so we're talking stuff that's years and years and years and years old um i think it was 14 15 years old i think like the, the coding question so again Windows XP does is still in use. Um, I mean, uh, in Britain we we had the the infamous NHS attack a few years back. Uh, it's still, I believe, in use in the Ministry of Justice in the UK as well. Uh, and I think they were still paying for support up until last year, as far as I know. But really and truly, you should have, people should have moved off of Windows yeah. XP by now. Uh, I mean, Microsoft are keen that you move off Windows 7, so XP is just uh, well, come on, guys, it's, it is time. Yeah. Um, so I guess the only real risk with this leak uh, is obviously you can imagine people are pouring through it. We know XP that's used in the uh, kind of self-service kiosks like you know sort of atms and some epos machines you know the self-service service, service machines you, you you'll find in some in, in some supermarkets uh they do they were still using supported xp up until i think last year is when that finally died that was a uh, post ready 20, 2009 so there's some slight risk there maybe i guess it's when you're going through the code, you may well discover there's, you know, we, we don't know how much of XP is still in Windows 10. Yeah. In theory, Microsoft re-engineered the whole lot, but we know Microsoft has got a rich history in backwards compatibility. So I'd be amazed if there wasn't some XP code still lurking around in the <laughs> in the darker recesses of Windows 10. So um, there is a slight risk. I think this is just a reminder that, you, you know, it's probably time to move on from Windows XP if you're still using it. There's plenty of other operating systems out, out there and not necessarily just, just Microsoft ones. Yeah, I think it's probably safe to move on now. But yes, it was a, it was, it was, all, it was, all, it was all a bit awkward, but th there was some other stuff this week which did, did appeal to me. I don't know if you saw it in the, uh, the X1 Fold has finally been launched for, for, for orders for October. Yeah, so this is a Windows. It is, uh, yeah. Devices, I mean, obviously, we're not getting the 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 neo are we um no. if, if at all but this is lenovo's foldable windows pc and i'd say it, it does look interesting if a bit of a beast in terms of its size and its cost mm -hmm. uh because i think um this is you know it, it gives you a 13.3 inch uh, oled screen uh it's a 2k screen a touch screen which is great but when you when but when you fold the thing down um it's it's almost three centimeters thick, right? which is <laughs> yeah, which is quite heavy. And, and unfolded, it's, it's over a centimeter, so it's, it's a bit hefty. And it starts at a kilo. And I saw some wonderful publicity photographs showing a woman holding it in one hand, reading it like a book. I thought you must have 
the muscles in your wrist must be something heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you must be a shop put or something because you think i couldn't hold a, a thing that heavy for, for, for that long so yeah so it's a a bit of a hefty old beast but yeah so the screen folds in half and you can and, and, and you can obviously unfold it can completely use it as a screen with a bluetooth key, key keyboard it's got a kickstand behind it or you can you or, or you can fold it in half with either a keyboard that pops up on the screen or a clip-on keyboard so it's kind of very similar in some ways i think to the neo concept isn't it except of course it's one yeah. foldable screen as opposed to two screens hinged yeah and and um i think it was originally planned to run probably run tedx but uh, i think it's, uh, it's running windows going. 10 <laughs> home or pro as they all yeah. are because tedx yeah. has disappeared uh yeah so it's it's interesting i mean it's hellishly expensive I mean, for, for, you know, I mean, obviously, this is a generation one system. So, you know, you, mm. I, I go, Lord alone knows what it's going to be like in terms of reliability if that screen you know, is going to fold properly or not. But it uh, starts about, I think, two and a half thousand, does it? Two and a half thousand yeah. dollars. And then the keyboard's going to cost you another 200 bucks. And, you know, it, it's only got eight gigs of memory, which is a bit measly these days for a high end machine. Um, although, Jason, we're pleased to note that you can upgrade the SSD to one terabyte. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it is a very interesting. It's it's a very interesting machine, and I think you know with the Neo currently missing in action, if you're into fold foldables, it does look like it's quite a flexible machine as well. I mean, it, I mean, I was looking at it. I thought it's chunky, but if that could be made a bit, you know, a bit skinnier, a bit more like the Duo, then then it would be quite a handy thing to have to unfold and just get a um a Bluetooth keyboard keyboard out, much like a um a Surface device. But yeah. that price, goodness me. Yeah. I think I'd rather wait for the Neo if it if it ships, which it's supposed to ship next year, but not till towards the end, and so sort of twelve months time almost. Yeah. Did you see any sessions on Windows 10X Ignite? Just curious. No, I didn't know. Yeah, of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not been a lot of Windows 10X news around at the moment, although it's supposedly still in development. Uh, yeah, um, I, I do hope it is. I mean, uh, um, yeah, it would be a shame if, because uh, it's, I mean, that is the future of, of, of Windows, really, isn't it? So, you know, yeah, one would no, no see... XP legacy code to worry about in that. Well, exactly. But then again, I mean, do you remember back in, back in the days of Cairo, you know, many, many years ago, <laughs> which obviously disappeared, but bits of that system did then creep into later versions. So who knows? Never say never. Yeah, definitely not. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll, 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 uh, I don't think I'll be ordering one of those folds, but I'll hold out for the uh, Neo <laughs> if it ever ships. Jason will be waiting for his uh, foldable uh, Apple device when they invent foldables. Uh. <laughs> yes, well, I'm, uh, I've still got my Apple Watch Series 4. I've resisted the 5 and the 6. Yes, I'm, oh. I, I, I have my 4 as well. Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well i've still got the uh samsung galaxy active and i do really like much enjoy that i've actually got the galaxy buds in as well today and i would say in actual fact my my apple watch has actually saved me so many because when i was just about to buy the xbox series x i looked at the time and realized i don't need another useless gadget in my life <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's there's a sage warning for it to everybody. So, uh, Jason, really did uh, really good, great to catch up with you again. So, really yes. glad you could you could join us. Um, yeah, thanks, Jason. Yeah, so that's that's actually put, cleared up all things uh, for me yeah, a lot. Uh, the Xbox been some yeah, some information. Yeah, it definitely has. Uh, so, where can people find you? Are you are you still on Twitter? I am on Twitter at database Jason, but it's it's very very silent. Oh, well, people can follow you. Yeah, you maybe we'll see some pictures of you. I hope you Apple devices. <laughs> uh, Richard, where can we find you? Uh, mainly on Twitter, at Richard underscore speed. Brilliant, thanks. Well, we should be back same time, same place next week. Gary should rejoin us. So, Jason, until next time, we'll get you back on when we've got something more for you to so you get your expertise on, maybe when the, the new iPhone ships. Yes, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been amazingly silent on that one so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've done a good job with that. With keeping those rumours quiet. Yeah, so we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, cheers then. Bye bye. Cheerio. Thanks to Richard and Jason. We'll be back same time, same place next week. You can email me at thisLifestyle.com. I'm at Iron Sticks on Twitter. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.